side with you and get the parents motivated to going into the school system and speaking on behalf of your beliefs and the, the wholesome environment that you're trying to create in your home and you find that there's no one backing you up. And it just goes on and on and on. So then you, but then you, if you look at the statistics in our community of Niagara Falls, we're up against uh, the whole idea of what the gentleman spoke on. It's about who you know. If you haven't walked, stepped on too many toes in the process. Uh, if you, and our young men, for instance, when they are out, when they're in their preteens or um, in middle school, eighth grade, they're taught to carry some type of ID with them on the streets because they would be stopped and questioned. Uh, there were at times curfews set up, and if you're out on the street, you're stopped and you're you know, ask to show your ID or question, and carry it off. And Dr. Dyson already spoke on that, because now this child ha is potentially has a chance of getting the record. You know, they're in the juvenile justice, uh, they're under, you know, watch of the city or the police department. They're not going to come back as adults to apply for jobs in the police department because they know that they've got a record. And the police department or the fire department is not going to hire them if they know that they have a record. Or if they know that they're, they're um, technically incapable of learning because they have a history of being um, needing special learning, remedial learning, math, reading, what have you. I mean, it's just, it seems like a vicious circle from a mother's perspective. So what I'm saying is that the motivation, you know, those are the, the things that we have to overcome and to begin to support each other. And, and one more thing I wanted to say is that if you go to the high school, if you go into the, um, middle school or the primary school, and you watch, just in the audience, when the end of school programs come about, the musical, the music department, I remember when my children were in school, you at least had a handful of minorities or people of color playing in the band, the jazz ensemble. We're still in the gospel choir. You can find us in the gospel choir. When you see the, the uh, Awards going out for academics, you know, the high scores in math and science, there are very few of us. I'm not blaming anybody, I'm just saying. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Sociology, by the way, was 
especially since Kendra Paul here is my professor, and I am glad to have him. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, um, I'm an undergraduate student at Buffalo State College, and I'm from New York City. And I've traveled abroad, been to Europe, China, and Turkey. And I just noticed that, in general, the youth over there are just self-motivated. Why do we, as a youth, lack this motivation? Like, there's so many students, like, there's so many opportunities at Buffalo State College, and I'm sure at NCC, you know, to do McNair programs, to travel abroad, speak foreign languages. We, as ourselves, as youth, don't take that initiative, and we gotta stop blaming others. Yes, there's structures in place, but why don't we have this self-motivation? What do you say? You're a smart woman. What's up? What's up? What's up? What do you say? I don't know. I just think in comparison to other, to other countries in the world, America is just so far behind, mm -hmm. even though we economically are supreme. Right. So, you talking about the Americans of all colors? You talking about America, the youth in general, so just our in generation. General are just not as motivated. Yeah. Well, that's that might have something to do with privilege, seeing stuff every day, taking it for granted, where people are hustling harder in societies where they don't, they can't take it nearly as for granted as we do. It could be. I heard somebody hell out, you know, loss of hope. You know, you know that old story about how you can tie up an elephant as a baby with a chain and then you can keep it as an adult with a string because you've conditioned that elephant to believe it's not worth much. So here we are in America with all of this great opportunity and the ability to maximize our futures by taking advantage of programs that otherwise don't exist in other countries. We don't have that kind of energy and desire. And then on the other hand, we see in other countries that happens. I mean, but it's not just in st student life. We see that in American life, period. Look at the Congress. Did they, did they uh, debate as much as the Europeans, the British? You know, oh, no, hell, yes, yes, no, you're crazy. You know, they're <laughs> debating the, the quality of public education, the, pub the quality of public discourse in, say, European life, say, British life. The nature of discourse, even in some African parliamentary procedures. Far, far more sophisticated and far more intelligent than what goes on as we take it for, for granted in America. On the other hand, I think that, um, that you know, we often compare the worst of America with the best of everybody else. The worst of, you know, even when black immigrants come here, you know, from, say, Caribbean or African nations, they look at black people, what's up with y'all? Yep. You're the best and the brightest coming over. So, you know, yep. you already self-selected. So that's like comparing Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan against some high school player, you know, who didn't have an opportunity or didn't have a dis didn't, didn't didn't have the ability yet to maximize their potential. So you can't compare the you know even though that analogy doesn't work all the way, you can't compare the best of a particular culture against the average of the worst of another culture. Um, even though it is reason for us to understand that even though we got all this cash and all this money and all this leisure time, what do we end up doing with our own resources is problematic. And not only in politics, we can ask the same thing in terms of television. BET mm -hmm. or TV1 versus MTV versus whatever. You know, what resources we have at our disposal and what we do with them and how we fail to maximize our potential, you know, is a serious, uh, serious issue. And so, Brother Keith, it ain't just from the outside, we criticize ourselves from within as well. I'd like to see that same criticism going on within struggling white communities that can understand some of its own privilege in relationship to others as well, but to take some of the legitimate critique that you might offer and tie that to, to others who, um, you know, lacking the kind of encouragement that they should enjoy, uh, don't succeed. I mean, I know, I got a PhD from Princeton. I come from the streets of Detroit. I'm not the only smart guy that grew up in my neighborhood. There are many others. My brother's been in prison for 20 years. Is an equally intelligent young man. His talent didn't get realized until later. I believe he's innocent of the charge for which he's been in, j in jail, but he did make mistakes. He did, he did certainly uh, mess up and has admitted that and has to take accountability of that. And ain't nobody here trying to deny the legitimacy of that. But the problem is, Brother Keith, and the problem with many of us who don't take this into consideration is that there are many more stories out there where people got a chance who didn't deserve one, who don't realize they got it, not because they're good or better, but because they happen to be born the right 